The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour. And it doesn't matter where you're at, as long as we're both here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Uh, we got a market that's kind of come off the lows. Um, I was pretty sure we had a fairly decent low in yesterday. Uh, what I was hoping for is a much bigger day today. And, well, let me just go to my newsletter this morning that you would have seen if you subscribed. So let's go ahead and pick that up. Where's that at? Today's the 17th, is it not? Okay. Summation indexes for the broad indexes are still lower. No medium term or longer term signal out there. Um you know, most of my other stuff out there shows that we could be uh, looking for a bounce over the next couple of days. Doesn't mean it's over. And, of course, probably the big news today is quad witching. And, you know, you've got four different things that are that are options that are uh, options on futures, options on all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, besides the regular uh, monthly expiration for equities. So you've got a lot of that, and there's some stuff that a lot of people don't ever think of that are kind of organic, can really move the market. But I think the biggest thing is we're going to a three-day weekend. A lot of people had um, a lot of money, and the, the normal tendency is if you, uh, let's say you've been short, and you've got uh, some big money, eh, three-way weekend, a lot of things can happen. Well, maybe we'll start covering a little bit, or some or all. And then, of course, uh, probably the big news today is the retracement of crude. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that, but probably the biggest one is it does look like a, a, a deal with the Saudis to produce even more oil seems to be taking shape. And uh, the White House not spiking the ball uh, in uh, their face uh, means it's probably more likely to happen. Uh, anyway, that's kind of it. And of course, lower crude prices are going to be, as I said in the den not too long ago, a salve for all the things that uh, are problematic. My belief, although it's hard to prove, is that 80 percent of all the inflation that we have now is wrapped uh, up in uh, higher energy prices uh, that literally go to everything and everything else. Uh, it's a feed and horrible feedback loop. And uh, if you're uh, totally disconnected uh, from the world, i.e. your big politician, I think a lot of people don't really believe just how much this is a massive tax, especially on the uh, lower economic scale, but on literally everything you do. This is just like adding a 10 percent tax to everything. Um, low energy prices or at least uh, energy at the uh, price of uh of uh, uh, unrestricted oil flow tends to be pretty good for the market. Uh, when you start artificially trying to make sure that people don't produce, you always get the exact same results. We've tried it before. And, you know, today I was uh, earlier, I was looking at the Malay speech from Jimmy Carter and uh, looking at the parallels, but probably the closest thing. And that was uh, just Reject reality. Tell everybody that they're all horrible. Uh, the people you need most to go out and drill and create more oil. And then expect kind of a different result. Tell everybody how they should, uh, you know, the glass is not half full or half empty. But you're going to just give them an empty glass. And here's a blanket, by the way. That didn't work out very good for uh, Jimmy Carter. I don't think it's going to work out any better today. Uh, Americans are, are not that kind of folks they tend to say uh here's a half a glass well come back when you have a full glass 
I'm not. Uh, I'm not a. This is not a half a glass full nation. But uh, anyway, as I said, uh, kind of watching out here, thinking that we probably would get up to at least uh, maybe for a little while, um, 37.25 or so on the S and P cash. Maybe we hit that and fall back to 3,700. It's kind of. It's not exactly uh, real crystal clear. We could go much higher too if we start seeing more people start to uh, cover into the end of the day. But uh, that's kind of it. We're going to look at some other charts. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. And, uh, of course, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, okay. What else do we have? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Baker Hughes rig index count up seven in the United States. That's pretty good. Uh, had a question of... What we're looking at here in gold, and yeah, I don't see a. I, it, at least it looks a little better than it did a couple of days ago. I still don't see anything out here that makes me want to see uh, be too froggy on it. But we shall look at it a little closer here. Um, the big problem I have with uh, this is that both energy on the down leg and the low came with. You had higher energy on the down leg, and you had basically the same volume uh, as you broke the previous low of 41.31. So there's nothing out here that says that even if you're right being long, uh, this is going to be anything other than a U bottom. And you also have the ability to go back and retest uh, that 41.31 low uh, to, to May 12th. Uh, you know, 200,000 shares isn't enough on an NTE. Uh, on a uh, uh, on an ETF like this, you should be seeing. I mean, at least in my view, which is the Wyckoff method, you want energy to go up, and or if you want to buy and be bullish something, you want that energy to come down on a lighter volume, and you want a test of the low on a lighter volume. You want the two things uh, to be congruent. That is telling you the same message. I don't see that. That's why I think that there are better trades out there. Uh, weirder things can happen, but, uh, you know, I keep on thinking that we're going to get 1775 out of gold, and that'll be the buy. Uh, every time you get kind of a decent signal out of gold, it ends up just doing something else. Probably the best thing for gold is crude pulling back. Um, everybody always wants to be in something to hide out on the weekends uh, on Wall Street, and uh, yeah, gold's much better off this weekend than being in crude. I think uh, it's probably the best thing going forward at the moment. 877-927-6648. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're going to the break here, see if there's anything else. Uh, when we come back... Uh, as I said, I'm looking for some short squeezes. I had one in the newsletter this morning that already took off. Um, I wasn't long, and I just had it uh, to watch when it opened up. It was already uh, tough to chase. Uh, but we'll uh, look at this. But anyway, a lot of stocks out here with, with higher uh, volumes, and uh, you, know, you may get a, a, a bounce out of these things, but still not a lot of stocks out there with a lighter volume back to the some. We'll be back in a In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. And as we return, starting to get a little bit of action. Uh, what is that? Let's just take them. Okay, yeah, just hovering around 3,700 on the S&P cash, up 166 on the Dow NASDAQ, up 213, Russell's up 20, crude oil's off uh, almost nine bucks, uh, which is about a little more than seven and a half percent. So what do we have? Well, we, we have history, and why it doesn't actually repeat, it does kind of rhyme a bit. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. <laughs> On this day in 1997, a group of users organized over the Internet cracked the data encryption standard, that's DES, if you live in Lutz, the, the strongest legally exportable encryption software in the United States after five months of work. The United States banned stronger encryption software out of the fear it would be used by terrorists. But companies designing the software say such restrictions were worthless because foreign countries offered much stronger programs already. Uh, which you could download and use in the United States. So it was pretty, uh, pretty nutso. And of course, uh, what we found out uh, in the early 2000s was that the uh, NSA and the CIA came over and leaned on a bunch of tech companies uh, to uh, put in a bug uh, in uh, uh, other encryptions, uh, RSA, which is probably the most well known, uh, to make it really easy to crack. Uh, and, of course, uh, the idea was that uh, we weren't going to let uh, governments other than the U.S. know about the easy backdoor into this. But, of course, all that stuff leaked, and literally everything before 2010 can be read almost instantly by anybody that wants to, including people at home. So why you are uh, maybe encrypting things today, just remember, they're probably not going to be defendable on the long term out there and uh, especially anybody that uh, has access to your data or you don't uh, decide to do something that's uh, incredibly stupid like not change your password over the years uh, and yeah, they're just going to end up in uh, some kind of online deep web auction one day for all your critical and wonderful passwords social security numbers and everything else but uh, u.s government a long history of doing something stupid like this. It didn't help us, uh, probably hurt us, 
but um, the idea was that we were going to put all the software elsewhere in the world and be able to read it at a moment's notice. And, of course, this is even before uh, 9-11, in which case they even got stupider on this stuff. Uh, this is not anything we can hide. Most of this stuff is in academic white papers. And, uh, of course, uh, a lot of people always working on that. As we look forward, uh, which I wrote a little bit about today in the Tech Insider in buying a new position, um, there are a lot of reasons uh, to uh, think that quantum computing is uh, coming much sooner rather than later. And, uh, well, if you know anything about quantum computing and the algorithms uh, that it will offer, you should be able to break just about uh, any code with the right uh, machine and about 10 guesses. So current uh, encryption, eh, pretty worthless uh, in the um, medium term if it's not already broken at the NSA today. And uh, over the long term, and eh, probably anybody that wants to spend the money could break it. So uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, don't trust the government. Uh, they don't have your interest generally in line, and they're a little delusional about uh, what the results are going to be. 877-927-6648. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're talking about uh, Santa Biotechnology. Uh, the IBB is actually doing pretty good for other reasons, but I think that's going to be kind of short-lived. It's up 4%. Uh, on some uh, dubious passing of uh, vi uh, vaccines uh, for those who need it the absolute least. And uh, I could make a fairly good argument on why, the, uh, why only probably... 1% of the 1% of, of people would probably need to take it. But, of course, uh, it's become a political football and reason and uh, any kind of uh, other uh, things on that are uh, in the rearview mirror these days. Anyway, nice pop. Anyway, uh, Santa Biotechnology, uh, one of the ones I had my list this morning, mostly because – of the uh, incredibly good uh, or high short interest in it. Um, again, a lot of these came down on high uh, volume. And if you were lucky enough to test a previous low on lighter volume and get back into the trading range, yeah, you're going to get a bounce. Uh, but that's probably the lion's share on this one today uh, in the IBB. You're just filling the gap down uh, from the 13th. When you gap down with about 3 million shares, um, the good part of this is that maybe you consolidate out for a while. You've got 3.5 million shares already today. 877-927-6648. Uh, Let's go to the usual suspects and see what else is happening. Got a little bit of a bounce uh, in Microsoft. Again, you ended up with a little bit too much volume out here. Uh, in the lows, and yeah, can you bounce a bit uh, up to about 254-ish is probably uh, what we're going to see fairly quickly, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday next week. I expect all light volume all the way through next week. Uh, probably not going to see any kind of decent volume again until after the 4th of July, which the uh, market vacation days on uh, July 1st, so you get three, four, uh, three, four, yeah, uh, second, third, and fourth. So, uh, and we'll see about that. Okay, other things going on. Remember, uh, we are closed on Monday for Juneteenth, so there won't be anything, although somebody in the den did say there are a few things in the futures that are trading, but uh, I imagine they're going to be rather thin. Uh, let's take a look at some other stuff out here uh, as we uh, continue to look out in the market. Okay. Uh, Apple was one of the ones that did come down on the same energy as it went up on, so not tremendously bullish. Uh, what you did have, though, is a, a, a lower volume test 
by 20 million shares of the uh, May 20th low. Now the question is, can you get back in and above 132.61 before the end of the day and hold it? You're at 132.46, so you're about 20 cents lighter. Uh, that could be one of the things that really moves before the end of the day to 135. It would move the indexes up fairly quickly. Uh, not a prediction, just uh, keeping an eye on out here, as I think we'll probably have uh, some people blink before the end of the day. And maybe it takes us to 3.30 to get there, but uh, maybe even before the end of the show, we should see a little bit of a pop and people that are short want to get out. Probably look back at If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Ron emails asking about Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Actually, this is why a lot of people would think a pretty horrible chart. Actually, not bad. You got a high volume high on February 3rd with 36 million shares. You've come back to 118, which broke the October 12th low of 2021. That had 10 million shares. The downside is you had 16 million shares. So you're probably coming back into some kind of support. Maybe you have to bounce and then come back with lighter volume, but not as bad as, uh, as a lot of people. I don't like the high volume out there, so I'm not pulling the trigger now, but you're probably going to bounce, come back, retest that 16, 118, 36 low a couple of times, maybe with lighter volume, and you might find something 
in there to go after. SMHs. Okay. Again, some very long-term patterns. Um, everything under 213 to, uh, is problematic. You basically broke uh, the lows on May 12th uh, with 8 million shares to about 7.8 million shares. Um, that was the March 8th, 2001 low. So we've kind of come back through there. You had some decent volume in the last couple of days. Yesterday you had 8.4 million shares. But you really haven't broken that low with anything that really screams that. Um, if you could pull back up into the trading range and then consolidate out, you could have a potential buy. But again, more of a U bottom than a V bottom in some of these. Uh, to the question about Disney, do I see anything going on in this one? Um, you've got a little bit of gap uh, lower. Um, not a lot of good news, at least on the feed for Disney. Do we have anything lower? What? What's going on here? Did I lock it up? Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I hit the wrong button. Okay. Let's see if we can go back here. Where's this gap go? Okay. Disney's coming back to this gap higher. Uh, 32 million shares higher on March 24th. Uh, when you look at that, we're kind of right back to that level. Unfortunately, yeah, I didn't look at the current price, so we'll do that real quick. Uh, for Disney, it's at 56 cents today. Uh, the downside is there's a pretty bad news flow for Disney, at least this week. Uh, two things going on. Uh, the uh, Buzz Lightyear movie is getting a bit panned uh, and uh, banned, actually, in several countries. Uh, and uh, the other thing is that uh, the Chai Coms, otherwise known as the Chinese Communist Party, uh, is uh, kind of threatening that uh, if we do anything to uh, help or support uh, Taiwan's invasion, uh, that they're going to steal their uh, steal. They're going to take over uh, the uh, the uh, Disney Park over there uh, in China. So uh, they're going to grab their goodies. So you never know the unintended consequences of what you're going to do. But certainly uh, they're leaning on Disney. And, of course, Disney is trying to lean on uh, folks here uh, in the U.S. In, uh, Congress, yeah, probably the best way to say it, uh, to make sure that we they don't steal their stuff. But uh, as I said, uh, companies go to China to die and get their stuff stolen. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of hubris, hubris uh, about uh, them thinking that they're all smarter than the Chinese communists. And uh, it's never been the case that I've seen. They just take their stuff and go. So uh, keep an eye out for that. If we do get into uh, a shooting thing in the Taiwan Strait, um, Disney's... Uh, while, why, what is it? Uh, I wonder what it's called over there. I know it's called Euro Disney in Euro. I don't know what it's called in China. Uh, but uh, probably not much uh, much uh, left of Disney's uh, theme park. They'll just run it, I imagine, and uh, take all the money. Uh, but uh, eh, keep an eye on that. Uh, as we go forward, of course, uh, semiconductors, the same thing. Uh, everybody's getting leaned on. Uh, to uh, make it easy for China to just take over Taiwan and its uh, chip manufacturing business, which is uh, probably the main uh, reason that they're going. And uh, they were out uh, breaking some champagne bottles on a new aircraft carrier today. I think their first really decent uh, aircraft carrier. So uh, things are starting to heat up out there in the Taiwan Straits. So keep an eye on it. Uh, today, what do we have here? Yeah, we're just kind of fooling around. It does look like that. Okay. 877 Uh... Yeah.
Okay. Uh, question about uh, FedEx, FDX. Uh, one of the reasons why you have to be a little worried about going short some companies, um, of course, uh, they came out and announced a, a fairly big addition uh, to uh, their distributions. Uh, and uh, you had the big gap. You really haven't done anything that would kind of come back into that gap. This morning and continue to move up. There isn't a lot of volume, but I don't see any reason to pull a uh, a a, uh, uh, a short sell on this. And you know the reason to do that would be uh, that uh, high uh, prices of crude uh, continue into and after this year. Uh, but uh, they hedged out a lot of what they thought were going to be higher prices. Uh, their uh, their uh, distributions for uh, shareholders uh, were higher, mostly because it hasn't really hurt that much that yet. Uh, but uh, you get into next year where they haven't hedged out higher prices, it could be a much bigger problem for them. But I don't see any reason to pull the trigger now. And especially uh, with crude pulling back, uh, it continues to be problematic. Um, the other company, well, one of the other companies, ORCL, that had earnings this week uh, was the Oracle. Um, and uh, it also gapped higher to 72.43. A little bit of a pullback, but not bad. Um, you did have a, a high volume low at 63.76, but uh, forecast looks fairly good. After the bell last night, uh, you had Adobe. Uh, it looked to me like, uh, at first blush, a lot of the options were going to go to money heaven. And by the end of the day today, uh, it looks like they will. You needed about a 5% move to do anything with Adobe ADBE. Let me get it correctly here. Uh, and it's basically flat on the day now, 365. There were a lot of options on this thing. So uh, you did get down to 338 earlier in the morning. But uh, it did not last. Uh, forecast, everything else was not as bad. Uh, the reaction was pretty horrible last night. Uh, and there's got to be a morning after. Got to watch that site once again. The sun will come up tomorrow. Back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
Trade CHAU or CHAD Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866 476 7523. A prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I can. I think I can. A little engine that could. Again, I'm not looking for uh, much of a uh, of a huge move here, but I, th I think a lot of people are going to scream, mostly because they're short out the gills, uh, and we're probably betting on a sell right into the close. My guess is we probably rally into 3:30, maybe 3:45 now, and maybe you get the last 15 minute sell off back to. 3,700, but uh, my guess is we're going to probably take a run at about 3,720, 3,725 on the S&P cash, uh, and we'll see. Um, you never really know on options expiration, especially uh, quad witching, uh, how many organic things could break, um, because a lot of times uh, it's not that you want to do something. It's that you have to do something because you've got all these leverage positions uh, hanging out on each other and you get a uh, computer starting to run and other people's computers trading against you and pretty soon you start having some wide swings and uh, before the fed decided to be involved on a daily basis and uh, come into your hearts and lives uh, around circa about 2009 it wasn't uh, untoward to hear uh, or see huge moves on these quad witchings and regular witch, uh, regular just uh, options expiration. My guess is they're probably going to start to come back a bit now uh, that there isn't an implied put under everything from the Fed. And we'll probably start to see a lot more volatility um, that we didn't have for almost well, a little over almost 12 years. Uh, and we'll bring some more back. So don't be surprised to see some kind of wild moves today. I'm not forecasting it. I'm just saying that you don't probably want to be uh, more than a, uh, a few seconds away from your mouse if you're trading for something today. Because uh, you, know, you always want to have your stops in ready to go if you're in something that uh, isn't uh, like options or something, that uh, you have some kind of... Uh, uh, risk defined before you start. Anyway, probably just going to chug up here for a while. I imagine 330, generally the pattern for this day, which has kind of worked out, at least not what I wanted yesterday, but what I uh, put in the newsletter this morning at about 8 a.m. is pretty much worked out. We were looking for some lows somewhere around uh, 1030 or 11 uh, to get in. I actually did buy some calls. And they're in the well, they're at the money now. So I'm hoping that they do a little bit better. Uh, but we shall see. 877 927 6648. Okay. Yeah, it does look like. Okay. Thoughts on DocU? Let's take a look at this one. Uh, you're coming back on a lot of these, uh, back to these very uh, long-term gap hires that started the whole thing. On uh, Docu, it was on September 6th of 2019. Uh, this gap hire, and I probably was long this thing around in here because I remember I played it a lot before. Uh, the pandemic hit and really didn't understand, made a, a lot of money because of the percentage moves 
uh, before the pandemic, really had no idea the pandemic was coming, wanted to be out uh, in that late February uh, 2021 area and stay out. But uh, that's it. You got your gap there. The low was 54 bucks. You were up on 25 million shares. So you're back uh, mostly around, uh, what was this big day down? 41 million shares, but I wasn't at the low. 14 million, 8 million, 7 million. Today you got about 4 million. You know, you really like to see this thing hit light volume on 55, and you may get an opportunity to do it. Um, but again, when you have these kind of moves to, uh, down to 55 bucks from 314 uh, bucks, and you have a very good high sell signal out here, 25 million shares on uh, September 2nd, 2020, to 2 million shares on August 10th uh, that you blew through it and then gave it back up. You actually had another opportunity uh, to get out of it uh, a few days later. Um, this is going to take a long time to consolidate, maybe three months, maybe six months. There may be some decent trades in this. But if you're looking for a long-term move, you want this thing to consolidate out. And then I would uh, try to see whether or not there's some kind of long-term uh, inflection point for the market because uh, your target should be 200 bucks. There's a double gap there uh, besides this huge gap. That's where, you know, over two or three years, maybe you could get back up there if they figure out how to get their mojo back. I'm not exactly sure. I've heard uh, Tom talk about signing lots of documents and lots of companies involved in this. I'm not an expert on other companies in the competitive edge DocuSign might have. Maybe others are not. And I probably would spend a little bit more time digging into understanding um, the competitive landscape of DocuSign before I started going after that $200 mark. But uh, if you just look at it on a chart basis, you know, few years down the line could you see 200 bucks you could and that would just be kind of a bounce a dead cat bounce and a downtrend uh, for this but uh, weirder things have happened uh, okay what else do we have yeah we're still kind of just f floating around down here so we shall see still looks like we could you know we're just hanging out anyway uh, 2K. Did I uh, check on my emails? Probably should. Okay. Okay. Looked at IBB already earlier in the show. We looked at Apple. Let's take a quick look at uh, some of the other ones in VDA and the usual suspects. What everybody's. Uh, we talked about this one making a fairly decent low. Not doing much today, but uh, you had a 71 million share low on May 12th at 155. You went below that, but uh, you never really got more than 55 million shares. Uh, today, you've got about 38. So you're going to probably come in low again. Um, again, I'm not a big fan out here of uh, trading stocks that go up on the same volume they go down on. Uh, but uh, on this, you could see a bounce that fills this gap, and that gap comes up just under 170. So you know, could there be a 15 buck bounce next week? Uh, there could on some kind of low in the market. Okay, do, 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 do. what else do we have here? Uh, Planeteer, PLTR, is it bottomed? Uh, no, just kind of having a good day percentage-wise off these lows. Uh, again, probably a lot of people are in some of these less expensive stocks that are probably not going away, uh, but they're highly short, and all you need is a little bit to get going to have a couple of really good days. We'll be back in a minute. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, we went up, tried to test 30, a little over 3,700, got pushed back a little bit. We've seen this action pretty much the whole day, but uh, there's not a lot of push. It's just a handful of people uh, selling, and it's enough in a thin market. Uh, let's take a look at the volume today. About uh, 9.5 billion shares with about an hour left. We did about 15 billion shares. I'm going to say that we're probably going to be in at about 12 or 13 billion shares today unless we get a ton of volume, which we generally do during uh, Delta, uh, Delta, not Delta, during uh, quad witching. So there's probably going to be a lot more going on very late in the day. Uh, as I said, a lot of this stuff starts rotating out and becoming problematic, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, anyway, uh, Kind of a quiet one. Remember, we're uh, closed on Monday for Juneteenth. That'll make it a four-day weekend week next week. Options roll over then. Happens fairly quickly, so look for a volatile Tuesday, uh, as generally they have to combine that just a little quicker uh, than usual. So normally you get a uh, after a three-day weekend in a options expiration cycle you get a little bit more volatility that's just them pushing it up and down to let them uh, roll in and out of some of the positions and hedges they had for this week 
So expect a kind of a big day. Of course, after a three-day weekend, you probably have a big day anyway, maybe even a little bit bigger. So we'll wait for that. Uh, other than that, uh, just kind of a quiet day. And, of course, we've had crude come back. Um, could be the, uh, the uh, move higher that we've been, I've been looking for probably through July 4th where we may take the next leg down in the markets. I think we probably, you know, pretty good signs out here that we have at least some temporary loads uh, for the next couple of weeks. So when you cannot, when you have to, we'll see you back here Tuesday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.